Have you noticed how we um, measure everything? This week I was making oatmeal. I measured out my half cup and then my one cup of water. I was driving here and I was looking, man, this thing, I got 300,000 kilometers. I'm going 50 kilometers. My engine is at nine. There's just so many measurements going on while I'm just sitting in my car. I need to stay this far from that line. I need to go this fast. Uh, we measure everything. I got my watch. I'm like watching, oh, I, how many steps did I take? Uh, everything. I'm brushing my teeth. For how long? Two minutes. We measure everything. Aren't we weird? We're, we're measuring everything. Right? It's, it's helpful uh, if you're cooking. Did you use the timer? No? What happened? It burned. That's a conversation for me and my wife. <laughs> you know, you go into the toilets at McDonald's or some restaurant, and they're measuring when did they clean it. They've got to sign the little paper in the toilets. You've seen that? Um, I get an email from Google every once in a while, and it tells me how far I've traveled. That's scary. Anyway, so somebody's measuring everything you do. How many did junior cert or leaving cert or some sort of exam? Can you raise your hand if you did a, in the last year, you've done a junior cert, leaving cert, any kind of examination? Hey, give, it, give them a hand. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you feel a burden lifted off of your shoulders, you all, um, and that you're blessed. But what are we doing there? We're measuring you. You, you take an exam to see where are you at, how are you getting on, because we just love to measure um, these things. So a test so, or an exam, the goal of a test or an exam is to quantify progress. This is a definition. Quantify progress so that you can adjust your process to produce the desired outcome. That's really the purpose of a junior cert in particular. You see how you're doing so that you can adjust your process so that the next time you'll do even, what, better, right? And so we measure everything. And the reason that often we measure things, not every time, but often the reason we measure things is in order to have a better outcome the next time. Because if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. If you don't know where you are, how are you going to figure out how to go where you want to be? So I want to talk about measuring stuff and um, something that we probably don't measure very often. I don't think we think about it in this way. So there is something that is so precious. And I don't know how often you think about this thing, but the Bible says it's worth more than gold. And it'd be nice to have a house full of gold, wouldn't it? I mean, we spend a lot of energy in our lives trying to get gold. It looks a little bit different. It's paper and copper and stuff. But the Bible says this thing is more precious than gold. So I, I want to look at the, what, some, some things that the Bible says about faith. First of all, faith is pleasing to God. The righteous live by faith. We're supposed to excel in faith. You're children of God through faith. Faith enables us to receive from God. God's work is by faith. Pursue faith. Faith is precious. Like I said, more precious than gold. Faith overcomes the world. You're called to, we're called to build ourselves up in faith. Now, I think you should take a picture of that because... There is so much right there, isn't there? There's so much that, I mean, you could spend all week just digesting one of those. Faith is so valuable and so precious. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm interested in growing in faith. But if we want to get to a higher place, we have to understand where we are. 
And is it, wouldn't it be interesting to measure where your faith is at? Like, I got A levels faith, or I don't know. Do you do A, B, C, D? What grade am I at? Hmm. So I want to bring us on a journey of increasing our faith. And myself personally. And um, so, you know when you go to the doctor to have an exam? You can't send your wife to have your exam. You can't send your husband to have the exam for you, right? And it's the same with our faith. But don't we, isn't it more comfortable to, to measure our faith by, like, somebody that inspires us? Oh, let me, you know, I kind of think about this, man, I, I want to watch that person's faith. They have faith. And sometimes we can live vicariously through others' faith. So I'm going to go, you know, anyway. It's a danger. And um, we do this uh, a lot of ways. We live vicariously. Do you know what vicariously? That means, like, you live through somebody else. So I don't know about you, but... I, sometimes I like watching those cooking shows. You know what I'm saying? And you're watching this, and you see somebody eating that food, and you're like, oh, yeah, I can taste it. Mm. I, can, I can actually, oh, I smell that. And it's almost like I'm living, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm living vicariously through them. And you know we can do that with our faith, too. You know, we can watch these YouTube people that are full of faith, and we're like, yes, oh, yeah, that's what I would do, yes. But you're not the one on the exam table. And, okay, so that's it. Just something to think about, um, because I want us to examine our own faith. And so I'm not talking, for me, I'm not talking about Heather's faith. I'm not talking about my mom and dad's faith. I'm talking, Noel, where's your faith level at? And I'm in, I want to encourage you to consider where's your faith really at? If you were on the exam table and somebody was looking at you, where are you at? Don't be discouraged, though. Be encouraged. Because the reason for the exam is so that we can get more faith grow in faith. Is that okay? It's like, that's a parent question. Is that okay? It is okay. Let's look at, what, what I'm sharing, what I'm going to share is really, so many of you have heard it before, but there's so many things that we need to hear it again. The word that I'm sharing is so simple, but when God says a simple word to us, we better listen. And it's amazing what you can hear and grow in when you hear a simple word once again. And this is a simple word I'm going to share, but I, I feel it's a, it's a prophetic word. Like, I feel like it's a timely word. Actually, all week I was planning to share something else, and then yesterday I was like, I cannot share that. This is not right. And then this, this word opened up to me. So I believe that it's a word particularly for us. So this is Mark chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. We're going to read through Mark 4 a bit and um, connect in with this faith, aspect of faith, growing in faith. So this is Jesus, and he's at the seaside, the Sea of Galilee, and this is what happens. He began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him. So he got into the boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land, and he was teaching them many things in parables. So imagine you're on the beach, a beautiful day. I don't know if you've been to Two Mile Gate at Kil near Killalo, Killaloo, whatever you call it, in Clare. Beautiful beach, beautiful sunny day, and imagine there's just this crowd of people so, so many people there that Jesus did, couldn't find a place to stand in order to share with them, so he had to get in this boat, go out, and that became his stage. 
And so he's speaking and teaching to the people on the beach. And I say, hey, that's church right there. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to be on the beach. Imagine listening to Jesus sipping my pina colada. <laughs> and so there's this crowd chilling at the beach listening to Jesus. And he's teaching the crowd. And I think it was probably amazing the things that he was saying. Super profound. I mean, crowds were going all over the place just to listen to what he had to say, see what he might do. And who wouldn't like to be on the beach listening to Jesus? Let's keep going. So they had their day at the beach. So on that day, same day, This is a little later in chapter 4. When evening had come, he said to them, let's go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? And he woke and rebuked the wind and said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Do you still not have any faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? Have you heard that story before? That's so amazing. So I want to talk about the voyage of faith, the storms of faith, the questions of faith. First, let's talk about the voyage of faith, right? Because we're on the beach, right? I want to be on the beach, personally. (laughs) I like the beach. But there comes a time where you got to get in the boat, the voyage of faith. And so it says that on that day, Jesus had finished his teaching. The pina coladas ran out. And he said, it's time. It's time. It's time. Getting in the boat was not the disciples' idea. It was Jesus' idea. We've had our time on the beach. It's time. We're going to cross over. So evening came. And so they decided to do it. Because if Jesus says it, we're going to do it. And I think that's probably not the best time to cross the sea is when evening comes. I'm not sure. I'm not a fisherman. But we're going to find out. So he said, let, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him in the boat just as he was, still on the cushion. So look, there are some things Jesus will teach crowds on the beach. There are some things Jesus will teach disciples in the boat. A few years ago, my kids got back from a birthday party, and my three-year-old walked in, and I was like, hey, where's my cake? And my three-year-old says, Daddy, if you don't go to the birthday party, you don't get any cake. (laughs) If you want the cake, you got to get in the boat. So then, I think this is interesting. It says that there were other boats with him, right? There was the Jesus boat, and there were other boats there. And I think I want to get in the Jesus boat, because in the Jesus boat, there won't be any storms. If I'm in the Jesus boat, no storms. Uh Uh-uh. Okay, let's keep going. Every boat is going to go through storms. Okay, let's look at it. The frightening storms of faith. 
and a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was filling, filling up. So this is such an interesting moment. Like, why? Why do you do this to us, Jesus? This was your idea. <laughs> I wonder if anybody said, you know, Jesus, why don't we wait till the morning to go across? Now's not a good time. This was your fault. You made us come. Now look. <laughs> so, um, anybody have one of those pull-up bars at your house where you do the pull-ups? It goes between the door. No, some of you don't. Anybody? Yeah, okay. So, how do you figure out if the pull-up bar is going to hold you? You get your kids. Hey, you try this thing out. <laughs> you put... You put your weight into it, don't you? you you got to put your weight into that thing to see if it's going to actually hold you. And the way for us to see how our faith is, we got to have an opportunity to put our weight into it to see if it's going to hold. And so what is that? That's a trial. That's a challenge. That's a fearful situation. That's when something comes and we're not sure why. That's, you're seeing, is this thing going to hold me? Trust in the pull-up bar. So then, this is what happens. There, you know, there's this great storm. Waves are breaking into the boat. So the boat was filling up. And he's in the back. And he's asleep on the, he's even got a pillow. He's on the cushion. Mm, oh. Jesus chilling out. And um, so it's important to know that just, you know, if Jesus is, he's sleeping, but he's not dead. Just because he's sleeping doesn't mean he's not alive. So, so these challenging situation, the challenging situation that you're in can be an opportunity. And listen, I know, like, I've faced challenges in my life that I just want to cry, run away, be somebody different. I get it. But what I'm telling you today is don't do it. You can actually look at it in a different way. And when you look at it in a different way, it's amazing what God can do. Encourage us to have faith. It's an opportunity. That's so messed up. That's hard for me to even say. Like, you met, and you, I have to say this in such a sensitive way because we go through such really difficult things. And if I tell you that that really difficult thing is an opportunity, don't you just want to give me a slap? <laughs> and I'm, tr I'm trying to say it with all sensitivity, all love, all understanding that I have within me. But God's word said those kind of things are opportunities to test your, where's your faith at. Okay. The storm of faith became the school of faith. Okay, now last point, the revealing questions of faith. So I'm just going to read a few of the verses. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So what are the, what are the questions of faith here? There's multiple questions going on here. I don't know if you see it. And the first question comes from the disciples. They say, don't you care? We're dying here. Why are you sleeping? Don't you care? And um, it's just logical, right? Because they're, they're fishermen. They know 
that this thing is going to kill them. If their boat goes under as it is in the process of doing, they're dead. They can't swim to save themselves. They're miles from the beach. They're in 40 meters deep water. It's nighttime. They don't know if they're even swimming in circles, if they're out there in the darkness. And they're logical. They are reasonable to say, we're dead, and you're sleeping. And so then he wakes up, and he rebukes the wind, says, peace, be still. I want to just read this story. I thought this was a cool story, just a little picture or illustration about a lion. This is for my kids. So there was an old lion. He went into his cavern to sleep, and he lies down until his shaggy mane covers his paws. Meanwhile, the spiders outside began to spin webs over the mouth of the cavern and say, that lion cannot break out through this web. And they keep on spinning the gossamer threads until they get to the mouth of the cavern. They get it completely covered. Now they say, the lion's done, the lion's done, we've got him. After a while, the lion awakes, shakes himself off, and he walks out of the cavern never knowing there was even threads there. And his voice roars, and the mountains shake. Such a picture of our amazing, mighty God. These things that we get overwhelmed by. Yeah, if we could really see who is sleeping, we would change our perspective. The Bible says, For God works all things together for good to those who love him, to those who are called according to his purposes. If you're in a difficult situation, it's not the end of your story. So, you know, I think, isn't it interesting, like the Bible says that the Lord will work quickly. I don't know if you, I don't have the verse on me, but it says that different places, God's going to work quickly. And, and I think, I'm like, come on, where's the quickly? But, you know, his timing is different than ours. So, so sometimes it takes ages. But I, but I think that um, it takes ages, and then the Lord works quickly. Boom! It's like, psh, the whole thing just got turned around. Oh, my word. How did that happen? It's like Jesus in this situation. How faith. Let's have faith. Somebody tell me amen. amen. Question two and three. So the first questions were from the disciples, and then Jesus asks the question. I love this relationship that we can have with Jesus. We ask questions. He asks questions. We ask questions. He asks questions conversation. So he says, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? What an amazing question from Jesus. I think that's really interesting. Like, he's like, it's almost like he can't even understand why you would be so afraid. You know, like, what's the big deal? Again, I know, we just feel like we want to slap him over. This is the big deal. Don't you know what I'm going through? But it's interesting. He really had a different mindset, didn't he? We see things differently. And I think that word mindset is a great thing because you can have your mind set. I'm just being reasonable. I'm just telling you the facts. But Jesus had a different mindset. I'm resting myself in something that I may not see right now, but it's a greater reality than what seems reasonable. Yeah, so it's, how's your mindset? Do you got your mindset or do you got like the Jesus mindset? This is his invitation. So then he just speaks and peace and be still. And so they were afraid of the storm. 
and now they're afraid of Jesus. Whoa! That is awesome. Jesus, the, the thing that we were so afraid of, you just talk to it and it obeys you. Okay, so you're in charge. Let me connect into you. Jesus. So some people had some exams in the last month or so. And some people are in exams right now. The Bible says over and over again, um, rejoice. Consider it joy. When you're going to sit down at the exam, be happy. Talk about a different mindset. This is what James said. He said, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. God's working things in your life. And this is an opportunity to learn. And I, I personally, I would, like to, um, I would like to just learn by watching others go in their boats. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'll learn this lesson by watching what they went through. You don't need to bring me on that storm. But sometimes we're just going to go through storms. And much better to have Jesus with you and have his peace so that when the moment does come when he speaks, you're like, hey, I knew it all the time. Amen? So that's what James says. Peter said the same thing James was saying. I'm going to read that to, to us. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So God wants to make us stronger in faith. And sometimes we got to go through some challenging things uh, in order for us to grow, to actually see where we are and develop into where he wants us to be. Amen? Shall we pray? So I just want to take um, maybe 30 seconds or... 20 seconds, and I'd like to ask you to think about an area that you would say that's a trial, that's a, that's a test, that's a challenge, that's something that makes me nervous or anxious. Think about one of those Now, I know you, you may not feel, feel something, but I'd like us to say um, a few words together as an expression of the faith that we have or that we'd like to have. And these are the words that I invite you to say with me. Jesus, I trust you. I think you're still thinking about that thing, that situation, that challenge, or that anxiety. And can we say that one more time? Jesus, I trust you. Thank you, Lord.
God, you are champion. You are, our victory is in you, Lord. And Father, I just thank you for what you're doing in our lives, that we are growing up. And Lord, thank you that um, you don't uh, bring us into a storm to leave us there. You bring us th through that to bring us to the other side. And Father, that there, there are greater things that you're working in us, God, so that we can see who you really are. So we can see who you really are. So that our joy can be in you, God. Amen.